Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for his worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ne hum logo ko Allah ki ibadat ke liye paida kiya. We see that in our lives we spend majority of the time outside the masjid. We are engaged in activities that do not seem to be the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, there is a possibility that every action that we do in our lives from morning until night and from night until morning can be regarded as the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The verse that I just recited from the Quran in the khutbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Yahud and the Nasara. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ne Yahud or Nasara ko hukum farmaya. Ke wama umiru illa liya'budullah mukhlisin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not ordered the Yahud and the Nasara, but that they sincerely, with ikhlas, they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dil mein ikhlas ke saath Allah ki ibadat kare. In the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Bukhari Sharif, Sayyiduna Umar Farooq radiyallahu ta'ala and said, ke qala Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, Every action is according to the intention. Har amal ki jaza niyat ke atibar se hogi. Faman kaanat hijratuhu ila Allahi wa rasooli fa hijratuhu ila Allahi wa rasooli. Whoever performed migration did hijrah Whoever left their homes and their families and their belongings and left their home and migrated for the sake of Allah and His Messenger وسلم, then their migration is towards Allah and His Messenger yani If the intention, if there is ikhlas, sincerity in the heart then their migration will be rewarded for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَىٰ دُنْيَا يُصِيبُهَا However, if someone migrated for the dunya so that he can receive a portion of the world for a business affair, 
أو إلى امرأة أو towards a female يمكحها so that he can do نكاح with her when the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم performed hijrah to Medina Munawwara there were a few who also migrated for other purposes there was one who migrated because he loved a female and she said that if you migrate here then I will do nikah with you so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whoever migrated towards the dunya or towards a female so that he does nikah with her فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِ then his migration is towards that which he migrated to. Yani, every action will be rewarded according to the intention in the heart. And this is why when Sayyiduna Jibreel alayhi salam came to, Allah, came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the form of a human being, the hadith of Jibreel, a very famous hadith, when he came in the form of a human being because the sahaba kiram stopped asking questions to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because they were asking too many questions and it was causing hardship upon the people because the more questions you ask the more restrictions are placed for example if a sheikh agar koi sheikh aapko ek wazifa de he says you must recite this 101 times, 101 martaba padho. And he doesn't tell you what time. He just says, Re- recite this 101 times every day. Now, if you go away and recite that every day in a time that suits you, then that wazifa will work for you. But if you pause the question, Ke huzur, har roz, Kitne baje? Fajr ke baad, fajr se pehle, isha baad, when? Now if the Sheikh says that every day after fajr, now you will have to pray it after fajr. Yani your question has caused the restriction and it has become a hardship for you. Because wazaif are like keys. Wazifa chabi ki tarah hota. If the key is slightly, the teeth of the key is slightly more, then the key won't work. So sometimes a sheikh gives you a wazifa, recite this 101 times, ek so ek martaba. And you think, chalo, ek do ziyada ho jayega, achha 102, 103, it's better. But it doesn't work like that. Because the wazifa is like a key. And if you pray more than what you have been asked, then the key won't open the treasure. So the more questions they were asking, more restrictions were being placed. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised them that the more you ask, the more restrictions will be placed. So they stopped asking questions. So now Sayyiduna Jibreel alayhi salam came in the form of a human being. And he asked questions to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that the people can learn from the answers. I am speaking in English because Hazrat advised that he speaks in Urdu every week. So you speaking in, you speak in English. Sayyiduna Jibreel alayhi salam, he asked what is Iman, what is Islam, and amongst them one of his question is Mal Ihsan. And Ihsan means Ikhlas, sincerity in the heart. What is sincerity, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, An ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarah, that you worship Allah as though you are seeing Allah. You worship Allah as though you are seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَى If you cannot see Allah, if you have not reached that level of spirituality, فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكَ Then know that He is watching you. So when you are standing in salah, when you are performing your salah, you are fasting, you are giving your zakat, you are doing Hajj, whatever good deed you are doing, you should think that you are in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is before you. He is closer to you than your jugular vein. And that is ikhlas, to know, be conscious 
of the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. That is what ikhlas is. And if you cannot see Allah's existence, Allah's presence, then you believe in your heart firmly that Allah is all seeing and He is seeing me. This is how you perform salah. If a person comes to the masjid to perform salah so that people call me a musalli, taake lo kahe ke namazi hai. If that is your intention, then there is no reward for you. Koi fayda nahi. It is just exercise. Standing up, bowing, prostrating, sitting, it's exercise. There must be ikhlas in your heart. If a donkey, if somebody takes a donkey all the way to Haramain Sharifain, he does tawaf, the donkey doesn't become Haji Sab. The donkey doesn't become Haji Sab because there is no intention. There is no ikhlas. They are not from the Ahlul Niyya who can make intention. We have been given this position by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We as mankind have been exalted amongst His creation. But if your ikhlas is not there, then nothing, nothing will be rewarded for. If you have ikhlas in your heart, then you will receive reward. Up to the extent that if you sleep at night with the intention that I am sleeping, Ya Allah, because you made the night as a time of rest, so that I can rest and I can gain enough energy to wake up for the Fajr Salah, then all your sleep is ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when you wake up, you perform your Salah for the sake of Allah, you love your wife, not because she's beautiful, not because she cooks your food, not because she washes your clothes, but because it is the hukum of Allah that I be good towards my wife. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that the best of us is he who is best towards his wife. And that is why I am good towards my wife. Then you will be rewarded for loving your wife. Because now you have ikhlas in your heart. You love your children. You love your children because they are a part of you. They are a part of you. Don't, don't love your children because they are a part of you. Love them. Because Allah has given them a right over you. Love them because Allah has made you the ra'i, the responsible, and they are within your responsibility. When you go out and earn money, when you go to work, go with the intention, not that I can build a bank balance, I can provide a good life for my children, but the intention should be that Allah has placed a duty upon me to provide for my wife, my family, my parents, my children. Therefore, I am following the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the time that you are at work, you will be rewarded for ibadah. And that is what ikhlas is. Ikhlas, sincerity in your heart, is to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times and to make an intention. Inna Allah la yanzuru ila adsadikum. Sayyiduna Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala He narrates in Muslim Sharif that indeed Allah does not look at your outer bodies. Wala ila suwarikum He doesn't look at your face. How beautiful, how bright, how dark, how ugly. He doesn't look at your face whether your eyes are black, brown or blue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed does not look at your body. He does not look at your face. وَلَاكِي يَنْزُرُوا إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at your heart. He looks at what is inside your heart. And that is how you will be judged on the Day of Judgment. When you rise on the Day of Judgment, no matter how long a beard you have, no matter how big an imama you wear, a jubba you wear, no matter how many times you came to the masjid and performed salah, if there is no ikhlas in your heart, all of that will be thrown in your face. Make sure that your intention is clean and pure. Because that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will see. It is important for me to tell you that this does not mean 
that your outer appearance should not be according to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Some people say that mein kya rakha hai, dil mein hai. Hai na? Some people say that ye kya hai, sab dil mein hai humare. That is not how it works. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said al-hukmu bil zawahir that the hukum surely Allah looks at your hearts Allah doesn't look at the outer appearance but for us the hukum is that we must always judge people according to the outer appearance we will always judge according to the outer appearance because we can't see what's in the heart people say don't judge a book by its cover Hannah you heard people say don't judge a book by its cover my question is is if the book is sealed and it is wrapped and you can't open the wrapper, then how will you judge the book? You have to judge the book by its cover. So if you can open the book, then you open it and then you judge someone. But if you cannot open the book, then you have to judge by the cover. And that is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the hukum will be according to the apparent so when you see somebody apparently a Muslim, then accept him as a Muslim. You see somebody going into a church, then know that he is a Christian. You see somebody walking into a temple, then know that he is a Hindu. You see someone walking into a Gurdwara, then know that he is a Sikh. And if you see someone walking into a Masjid of the Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, then know that he is your Sunni brother. That is how we judge according to the apparent. So the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered us that we must lengthen the beard. You must lengthen the beard. If somebody does not have the beard, somebody doesn't have the beard, then don't judge that he shaves his beard, he cuts his beard. You don't know. Think good. Maybe his beard doesn't grow. Until you know that he shaves his beard or he cuts it less than a fist, then you will judge according to the apparent. Do you understand what I'm saying? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A'fulluha, A'fulluha, lengthen the beard, waqfu shawarib, shorten the mustache. Hana hadith sharif min. Awfirulluha, lengthen the beard. Now, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam orders something, it becomes wajib. The command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam makes it necessary upon us to obey. We must obey the command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We say that we love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who do you love more? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or your wife? Or your children? Or your manager at work? Or the director of the company that you work for. Every Muslim will say that I love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than anyone. He is the most beloved. Then if he is the most beloved, then why do we not obey his command? He says, lengthen your beard, shorten your mustache. Then why do we not listen to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? You know, two disbelievers... They were not Muslims. One of the kings from a nearby country, he sent two of his men with gifts. And he said, go and present these to Muhammad, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Them two came in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They had no beard. And these are not believers. They did not believe. But when they came with the gifts in the court of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what happened? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam disliked looking towards their faces so much that he turned away. He completely turned away. He didn't want to look at them. And he knew that these two do not believe. Yet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not bear looking at their faces. Then you think to yourself, that he is the most beloved, you love Rasulullah more than anyone, then why is it that you don't obey his command? When you die and you go into your grave, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will appear, do you think he will like to see your face? 
If there is no sunnah, Al-hukm of the the hukm is always according to that which is apparent. It is Allah who will judge according to the heart. Allah will see the intention in the heart that why he does not have a beard and if his intention is because it doesn't grow. He has leukemia, for example. Then Allah will judge according to the heart. But us, our duty is to judge people according to the apparent. That is why when a person comes, he says, Ana Muslim, I am a Muslim. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. We accept he is a Muslim. You must accept because we must judge according to the apparent. And if somebody apparently comes as a disbeliever, we accept him as a disbeliever. If we had to judge people according to the heart, then we would not be able to call our own family Muslim. Kya malum uske dil mein kya hai? We won't be able to tell whether my own father is a Muslim. I don't know what's in his heart. You won't be able to tell if Donald Trump is a Muslim or a kafir because you don't know what's in his heart. But we know because we judge according to the apparent. We judge according to the zahir. And this is why once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent a group of companions to a mission. They went, when they went to this mission, they had an interaction with a few disbelievers. The disbelievers, with, they drew their swords and a battle began. And the Muslims had to fight to defend themselves. And in that battle, one of the Sahaba Kiram, he saw that another one is fighting with one of the enemies and the enemy dropped his weapon and he said, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. And this person killed him. The Sahabi said, why did you kill him? He said, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. He said he only said it because he was scared of me. He knew that he was about to die. So to save his life, he said, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. They argued. They came back to Medina Munawwara. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's court. They said, Ya Rasulullah, this is what happened. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became so angry. The Sahaba kiram say that his blessed cheeks became red as though someone had squeezed pomegranate on his cheeks. And he said, Qatalu, 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 you murdered him. You murdered him. You murdered him. He said, Ya Rasulullah, he only said, La ilaha illallah, because he was scared of death. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Did you open his chest? Did you rip open his chest and see in his heart? How do you know? If he said, La ilaha illallah, then you must accept that which is apparent to you. And that is why we will always judge according to the apparent. It is Allah who will judge according to that which is in the heart. And therefore, my fellow Muslim brothers, it is our duty to ensure that we make sure our sincerity is pure in the heart. If you are from amongst those who look after the masjid, then it is your duty to make sure that your intention is pure. Not, not that people will respect me. Not that people will congratulate me. That mashallah, you do so much work. That should not be your intention. Your intention should be the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the masjid, the ulama, if the ulama gain knowledge so that people will respect them, people will call them for lectures, give them nazrana gifts, then there is no reward for that alim. If the alim has sincerity, ikhlas in his heart, that I will become an alim so that I can raise the banner of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can spread the knowledge of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Then he will be rewarded. Similarly, when you come to the masjid, if you come to the masjid with the intention of performing salah, then you will be rewarded for salah. But if you leave your house with the intention that I will walk towards the masjid, when I meet a Muslim brother, I will say Assalamu Alaikum to him. You will be rewarded for saying Salam. And then I will come to the masjid, I will do the ziyarat of my fellow Muslim brothers. 
I will do the ziyarat of the Ali Medin. I will look at the blessed face of an Ali Medin. Then I will do musafaha with the Muslim brothers. If anybody needs help, then I will help him. No matter how many niyat intentions he makes, he will be rewarded for all of them intentions. And that is why reap this reward. Sayyiduna Abu Musa Ashari radiallahu ta'ala narrated that Su'ila Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam anil rajuli yuqatilu hamiyyatan wa shaja'atan wa yuqatilu riya'an ayyuhum fi sabilillah ya Rasulullah that oh Rasulullah o messenger of Allah a man goes to jihad he fights in the battlefield he leaves his family behind he leaves his children behind his belongings he is there in the battlefield he doesn't know whether he will remain alive or not. He is sacrificing his life. But his intention is Hamiya. Yani for his family name. So that people don't say that that family are full of cowards. But that people say that that family is respected. They go and battle. And there is one man, Ya Rasulullah, he fights in the battlefield. With the intention that people regard him as a brave man. And then there is one man. He fights in the battlefield so that people call him a mujahid. Ya Rasulullah, which one will be rewarded for doing jihad in the path of Allah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, Ar-rajulu qatala litakuna kalimatullahi hiya al-ulya fahuwa fi sabilillah. Yani none of them are in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only person who is in the path of Allah who will be rewarded for his effort is he who fights with the intention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure is gained. So no matter how many people perform, how many salah, how many hajj you do, how many times you go to umrah, no matter how many fasts you keep, no matter how much you give in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if there is no ikhlas in your heart, there is no reward for you. So make sure that your niyat, make sure that your intention is pure, make sure you have ikhlas in your heart, then you will be rewarded for your actions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all ikhlas in our hearts. We are in the month of Rabi'ul Awwal, the month of Noor, the month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us the greatest gift of all, Sayyiduna Muhammad Mustafa. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we do not have ikhlas in our hearts, then we will not gain the benefits of this great month. Tonight is the night that people will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To thank Allah, to express gratitude towards Allah for sending us this great creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is free from all faults. He has no defects. He was the perfect human being. Sayyiduna Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Make sure there is ikhlas in your heart. Make sure you, you know in your heart that you love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Make sure your outer appearance shows that you love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Ghazali radiallahu ta'ala used to say that a man who says that he loves someone but he doesn't show it in his outer appearance, he is a liar. And I, when you have a friend circle, you have friends, you know your friend circle, you know this is my friend, you know how they are. You know when one of them falls in love with someone, you know. Pata chal jata hai. We know there's something wrong with this guy. Hana kuch badla hua malum ho raha hai. Yesterday, he used to dislike drinking Sprite. Suddenly he's drinking Sprite. Why? Because he has fallen in love. And when the beloved loves something, the lover also loves it. It becomes apparent. So make your apparent according to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tomorrow there is a procession. 2 p.m. The julus, what is the julus for? The julus, your intention should be to, gra- to express our thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ 
As for the ni'mah, the gifts, the bounty that Allah has given to you, then publicize it to the people. Publicize it to the people. If a friend of yours gives you a gift, he gives you a watch, he buys you a watch, he says that I love you for the sake of Allah, I have brought you a gift. And he gives you a watch. You take that watch and you put it, lock it away in your cupboard, and you never use that watch, how will your friend feel? But if you take that watch out, you wear that watch, you show it to the people that my friend Muhammad gave this to me. My friend Jabir gave this watch to me. Look at it. That shows that you are so pleased. You are expressing happiness. You are thanking your friend. It is a way of expressing thanks to your friend. Similarly, Allah has given us gifts. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that when Allah gives a man wealth, then Allah wants to see it in his outer appearance. He shouldn't be wearing torn clothes and dirty clothes. If Allah has given him wealth, a way of thanking Allah is to wear clean clothes and show to Allah that, Ya Allah, you gave me wealth, I am wearing clean clothes. That is the way to express thanks to Allah. And that is why we have the greatest gift, the greatest ni'mah that Allah has given to us. That is Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we should publicize that ni'mah. We should tell the people that this is Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, in order to publicize this gift and express your gratitude in the court of Allah, make sure that you try your utmost to attend that procession at 2 p.m., which will be led by my dear friend, my, uh, my colleague. We used to study together. Huzur Qibla, Maulana Allama Muhsin Makki Sal Qibla. He will be leading the procession. Make sure you attend that and make sure you express your gratitude in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakumullah khaira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.